Okay, this is a spark arrestor, a bubbler, and a measure, all rolled into one. I'm going to go into showing you how to build it here, or how to build one. Fairly simple, straightforward. There's a few wee pernickety bits, but if I show you how to do them, and you just bear with it, you should be able to build one, no problem. Um, okay. I'll go into the sizes first, so we'll get the sizes together. Okay, now I'm at the moment building a half litre measure, a much smaller one, but I'll show you on one of these older tubes exactly how to go about doing the pernickety bits. The actual unit itself, if we break into three, three parts, that's the whole unit. We break it into a couple of different parts, it becomes easier. First of all, you've got two tubes, an inner and an outer. So, both of them, for obvious reasons, are the same length or height, whatever way you want to work it. That's 330 millimetres. Now, the larger outer tube is 4 millimetres wall thickness, 84 millimetres inside diameter, 90 millimetres outside diameter. So that's your larger tube. Your smaller inner tube, again it's 4 millimetres wall thickness, 74 millimetres inside diameter, 80 millimetres outside diameter. So if you copy that, you'll not go far wrong. Now, 330 high. That's for a particular reason. Let me just show you. This is my inner tube. I've just taken it out. And you can see here that it's 330 mil high. If we actually want to look at it first like this, it's quite important to understand this. That's your first 250 milliliter mark, your next one, your next one, and your next one. We still have a, a deal of extra tubing on the bottom. Okay. Now, how you get your milliliter marks, fairly bit of common sense. You pour in 250 milliliters, and there you have your mark. You mark your tube there, and that's the volume. That's your first two, and you just carry on till you get to the fourth one. Now, we still have a... Approximately 85 millimetres left at the end of the tube. That's for a particular reason again, so just let me stop this. Okay, there's my tube, and what we've got is 250, 250, 250, down here we've got the, the full litre, so as soon as it hits the edge of this inner, uh, outer tube, you know you've got yourself a full litre in there. So we need that extra mileage on the inner tube, so we've still got balance in the tube, and we've still got a seal on the water level. Because you've got a couple of different water levels you can do in here. This one's for when I'm using it as a measure, I fill the water up to this height. When I use it as a spark arrestor, I fill it up to this height. I'll go into that later. Open the valve. Down it comes and it's ready to... Close the valve again. And we're ready to start measuring again and it's as quick and handy as that. Okay, if we go on to the base. You can make these bases larger, but I wouldn't suggest you make them smaller because what we've got going on is the bend in the pipe. You know when we bend the pipe? We can only bend the pipe so much, so you've got to allow for that to come back through twice. So we've got any one pipe is going in once, bending down and coming out. And we want to allow for it to be secured here on the outer edge as well. So it just gives you that rigidity. And what we're doing height-wise is we're allowing for that 
bend to be housed in the bottom. That's why we've got an upper and a lower plate here. Now this upper plate is 150 by 150 square. So there it's there, 150 by 150. The bottom one is 200 by 200, although you can, I've got one over there that I've, I've made 300. This is so if you've got a pipe hanging down and you're on the workbench, it also gives it a bit of stability there, do you know what I mean? It just gives it that real stability. These blocks here, I've got an old one here, are again just acrylic. In the past I've drilled these out but you can see what happens if you're drilling acrylic and you get it wrong. It just propagates every way you want. We crack will just go every way. Um, obviously acrylic has no grain structure so it doesn't run through a grain structure like wood or metal. No lattice going on so it just goes any old way. I don't really do these bolts in there anymore. When you use the weld on or the, the tensile 70, believe me it's secure enough. And that's what we're going to do here later on. But for the moment, just remember in your head that you want to allow for this bend here. Coming through the centre and being able to come out on your tube here. So we'll come to that again later on, but just make sure you, you allow for it. And allow for it in height as well. Okay, I mean, these are about 38 mil, and they're an inch square. Okay, a couple of things you'll need is sandpaper. Just whatever you've got lying around. A bigger squarer bit than this is better, but this is what I've got lying around. This is a 180. So if one of these little sander units. This is two pieces of wet and dry. One's a 240, which is fairly rough enough. And the other one's a 1500. So that's a 1500 wet and dry. These you'll use last. This one you'll use pretty much straight up uh, to try and get the, the edges of your, your acrylic. Now, when you get these tubes, don't remove the, the stuff off them. Just peel it back slightly. You don't really want to be removing it because it will stop any scratches. But when you peel it back, my advice to you is to check that you've not got any wee laminar cracks in here because if you've got even a, a millimetre crack in there you're either going to live with it or when you're building later on adjust for it um, because you would be forever trying to get rid of a millimetre crack there you know and it will at some time propagate and just check that you've not got any major cracks running down the, the inside lines or anything but I would, I would definitely check these edges before you start working on it because if you've got any kind of crack coming this way in, in the linear sort of send it back to the manufacturer and get it replaced these ones you'll deal with because these are just saw cut marks and this is what we're going to get ready first to get a nice flat finish so we can weld on okay right okay just go around the edges that way I think marker is some colour so this is going to act like engineering blue for us now then, got it all covered like that and we just go to our first piece of sandpaper and we'll just use this one first now what you're going to be doing is quarter turns you didn't want to, you didn't want your pipe ending up with a, a, a sort of an uneven slant in it. So make sure you turn it pretty regularly when you're doing it, just like a, a cylinder head valve. Yeah. Give it a quarter turn. Do four or five turns, quarter turn. Right, and there we can see there, in the light, where we've got wee dings in it, there wee deep, deep marks, wee deep points. Okay, and that's really what you're looking to get out, is these wee deep points. You can see them in the red side there that I've, I've got, is that light catching right? You can see them, there wee deep marks. 
and at that point you just take your pen again go around it again this time because we've got a few deep ones we'll just go to a higher grade and see them starting to come out and it's just a case of keep them on with that with a higher grade until you get rid of them you can actually feel them with your nail you feel the wee dings and just get them pretty flat now taking off any excess ink that's got on it will charge you a fortune these companies for you know stuff that will remove ink and pens and things so get yourself some shoe protector this is a UK one this is Clark's and it's got that same high alcohol content thing in it some of that on it and off comes any of the red marker see and just go around it a couple of times to make sure you've got it all off and if you have got any wee indentations in here you know because sometimes you get little indentations let me find that inner tube yeah sometimes you get the saw cut and you'll get wee indentations like on the inside of that one make sure you get all that ink out and I would then say to myself because it's the inside tube I'll put my lid on this end and I'll keep this wee dingy bit on the inside down at the bottom and nobody will ever see it because if you did weld it on there and it had ink in it it would actually colour the hole the, the bleed out would happen and it would bleed out and you'd get the ink colour into your weld I've made that mistake before gave me a really nice blue coloured weld but anyway just something to notice and try and get all these bits nice and smooth make sure you clean them right off if you've got any really major bits that's, that's going to be a nightmare to you just use a bit of common sense and put them in the other end of the tube down the bottom where they'll not be seen you know down that bottom end and if you're going to weld weld the good end with the outer tube down the bottom and maybe just leave a bad bit up here you know because I mean even to be honest with you I didn't finish some of these I just give them a you know because it's not really noticeable like there. I didn't bother too much with it because it's not noticeable. Unless you're looking. But you can see it comes up really nice and clean and dead flat. And that's what you're looking to get ready. And you just keep working away until they're gone. And it's as simple as that. And then your last rub, when you've done the, the heavier sandpapers, your last rub will be on the wet and dry and you'll come up with a really nice smooth if you're going to use blocks or these wee bits of bar, bits of tube um, well bits of rod I suppose um, you're going to get them with saw marks again in them I wouldn't worry too much about that um, I probably wouldn't put any dye on it because it can be difficult to come out what I would do is maybe just give them a wee quick job just to take off any garbage on them like that just to get them kind of flat make sure you've not got any rough parts because you always get wee rough parts around the edges when you've been sanding so just take them off and you'll find that when you weld these on the, the weld is a an actual chemical bond it melts the two surfaces and they become dead clear so any of these real rough bits are, are gone just make sure you've not got any highlighted bits on it can high and low just get rid of any wheat 
thing made it. But you'll never get them totally smooth, so I wouldn't worry about it. And you can see there, that's good enough for welding, because that'll come out really clear. Okay, 